catfish slat traps are wooden catfish traps, basically box traps. Now they can be round or they can be square, and they range in size from anywhere from four to six feet long. They're made of wood, and they usually have two sets of throats. Now the throats can be either be made of wood or plastic. Most of them are made of wood, like the box itself. And every trap has to have a door to remove the fish and to put the bait in. Now I no longer use slat traps, but I used to fish them a lot. But that's not to say that they aren't any good. Slat traps are very effective fish catchers, but like every tool, they have their pluses and minuses, and in this video I'm going to explain how to use them, and then you can decide if they're for you or not. Now when you first get a slat trap, if you just throw it in the water, it's going to float. You have to get it good and waterlogged so it'll sink on its own. Now keep in mind that as the trap gets waterlogged, it's going to get heavy, really heavy. A six foot trap can weigh up to 40 pounds. Now this can be a chore to manhandle in and out of a boat by yourself, especially if you got a lot of traps to run. And in my opinion, this was the biggest strike against the slat traps for me. That is the weight and the bulk. It's six feet long and 40 pounds each. 10 traps takes a good sized boat and a lot of muscle to handle. This isn't something that you can fish out of a canoe or a kayak, which is the main reason that I no longer use them. Another thing to consider is that they are made of wood. Now, as wood gets wet and dries, it'll start to curl. A trap that's made with wood throats is especially vulnerable to this because the throats are pretty thin. And when you have the trap in the water, you pull it out and it gets dry, the throats are going to start to curl. And when that happens, they become completely ineffective. So to prevent this, whenever you pull a wooden slat trap out of the water for any length of time, you'll need to stick a Coke can or something in the mouth of the throat and then put a rubber band around the slats of the throat to hold it against the Coke can, and this will prevent your throats from curling out of shape. Now, a plastic throat saves you from having to do all of this, so that's one reason that in my videos you see me always using plastic throats. Uh, to me, they're just a lot easier to work with. Now let's talk about bait. I've used cheese, meal cake, soured grain, and meat scraps and I can tell you that cheese is by far the most effective bait. Meal cake works good but meal cake also attracts scale fish and as well as catfish. Now I've found that cheese tends to only attract catfish. And catfish cheese can be exp expensive, um, it stinks and it can be hard to get. Uh, if you have to buy it on online the shipping can be expensive. I'll do a separate uh, short video on catfish cheese but suffice it to say, if you want to be guaranteed to catch and fish, use cheese. So now we've got our slat trap. Uh, it's waterlogged. It'll sink on its own, and we've got our cheese, and we're ready to go fishing. So now what? The first trick is to pack the slat trap with cheese properly. Most people think they need to put the bait in the back of the trap so the fish have to swim all the way through the throats to the back of the trap to get caught, and this is wrong. If you put the cheese at the back of the trap, the fish will swim around the trap and they can try and get to the cheese from the back or the sides and they can't get caught that way. This is especially true if you're in an area that doesn't have a lot of current in the water. The slat traps have two throats. The first throat is wide and it's called the tickler and its job is to direct the fish deeper into the trap. When the fish touches a tickler throat, his reaction is to shoot forward a little bit, and this sends him to the inner throat, and that's where he actually gets caught. And that's where you need to pack the cheese. You need to pack the cheese around the inner throat of the trap. You want the fish to be attracted to the mouth of the trap, not the back of the trap. You want him to spend as much time at the mouth of the trap as possible, because that's the only place he can get caught. He can't get caught if he's swimming around at the back or the sides of the trap. This is critical. The next thing is to use enough cheese. On a six foot trap, use five pounds of cheese and pack it tightly around the throat. Don't skimp on the cheese. You got to use enough bait if you want to catch fish. Now another trick is I often put the cheese into an old pair of pantyhose or a sock or something like that to, to help keep it together 
a little more so it doesn't dissipate quite as fast. But still, even if you're putting it in a bait bag or a sock or something, put it up around the throat, put it up around the mouth of the trap. Finally, let's talk a little bit about check times. In cooler weather and water, you can run a three-day check if your law allows. But when the weather turns hot and the water gets hot, you need to run your traps at least once a day. In hot weather, fish will die in these traps if they're in a place where water movement and aeration is low. Finally, you always want to fish these traps with the mouth facing downstream so that the current carries the cheese smell downstream and the fish are swimming upstream into the trap. Now keep in mind that a slat trap is only going to catch certain sized fish. Unlike hoop nets, which come in very large sizes and can take the largest catfish, slat traps are best suited to catching the one to three pound variety fish, which in my opinion are the best eating size anyway. So if slat traps are heavy, bulky, expensive, and you have to maintain the throats, why would anybody use them? Well, number one, because they work. They are very effective fish catchers, and they last. They're very durable. Anybody that's ever fished nets knows that an alligator or a big snapping turtle can come in and just wreak havoc on your nets. Now, if you've got a bunch of hoop nets out and you've got a snapping turtle or a gator that figures out there's stuff inside there to eat, they can just go through and just tear your nets up. They can cause thousands of dollars worth of damage. Now, a slat trap is a lot more durable and is much less susceptible to damage than a net. Durable, heavy, expensive, bulky. Personally, they don't fit my style of trapping, but they do work and they definitely have their place in the water. If I lived on a river, I would definitely use slat traps. But if transportation's an issue, you might want to consider other options such as nets, which are lighter, they can collapse, and they're easier to transport. So anyway, I hope this has been of value, and if you have any questions, leave some comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks a lot. Y'all have a good one.